Hello and welcome to Unpacking Terms. Today we're going to unpack the Fundamental Difference Hypothesis, FDH. And this hypothesis was proposed by Robert Blake Broman. So today it is mostly about him. I will be quoting other scholars, but he was the one who proposed it. What does it say? In a nutshell, it says that monolingual first language acquisition is fundamentally different from adult L2 acquisition. So it's all about the differences between L1 and L2 acquisition. And in the original article, Blave Roman talked about 10 differences between L1 and L2 acquisition. But the fundamental one is that the end state or ultimate attainment, as it is called in SLA, is different in L1 than L2. In L1 acquisition, we tend to have uniform and reliable ultimate attainment. So babies learning their first language do not end up with very different linguistic systems in their heads. Whereas in the case of L2 acquisition, the result is non-convergent and unreliable, meaning that there's a lot of variability in terms of the end state. To put it in another way, second language learners exposed to the same target language may arrive at very different interlanguage grammars. And so the question is, how come? What explains this difference? In the case of the first language, the innate mental capacity to acquire language is available. But in the case of second language learners, especially adult second language learners, that is not the case. Instead, second language acquisition relies on the first language. The revised version of the fundamental difference hypothesis in 2009 hinted at the fact that it might be available, but it is less efficient. So the differences still exist. Now, different scholars are going to raise different questions. Usage-based approaches raise the following three questions. First, is there really an end state? Can we say that there is an end state, an ultimate attainment? Does it end at some point? The other question is, is it as homogeneous for L1 acquisition as we think it is? Do all monolingual native speakers of a language have the same linguistic system in their heads? And the question that is really pertinent to the FDH is the following. Are the differences between L1 and L2 acquisition due to differences in the cognitive processes or in the conditions? And I guess you could say this is the common ground among many scholars, is that they are the same, but also different. The processes are very similar or the same, but the conditions are very different. And that might explain why there's so much variability in terms of ultimate attainment. Some scholars claim that they are fundamentally similar when it comes to the cognitive blueprint and mechanisms. So the process of acquiring the language, the role of input, the role of output, etc., all of that is the same. It doesn't change from L1 to L2 to L3. But at the same time, they're fundamentally different because there's more limited engagement with the language, perhaps less access to input, less access to opportunities to use the language, and also the biggest difference of all is that there is at least one other language already acquired. There is already a linguistic system in place. That is not the case with monolingual first language acquisition. And Van Patten gives us this analogy to make sense of this view that they are the same but different. And the analogy that he gives is going up the stairs with or without a suitcase. And the suitcase would be the L1. They both involve similar movements with your legs, but at the same time, if you're carrying a heavy suitcase, perhaps you're going to go a little bit slower, or perhaps the efficiency in going up the stairs is different if you're not carrying anything at all versus if you're carrying something very heavy. So the question is, would you consider these two situations fundamentally different or fundamentally similar? It depends. 
Some people focus on the differences. For example, the fact that you're going at a much slower speed, the fact that it requires a lot more effort, whereas other people might be focusing entirely on the fact that the movements you're making are very similar. And for Van Patten, Smith and Benatti, you should focus a little bit more on the similarities than the differences. And they say, when we let differences drive how we view the world, we lose sight of the similarities. There are important differences between the two, but these should not be the determining factor in what we do. Now, my take on it is that in the classroom, it shouldn't be about one or the other, but rather we need to keep in mind both the differences in the similarities. They both should inform what we do. And this is why sometimes I am cautious of approaches that make claims entirely on the basis of this is how you acquire your L1, therefore this is going to work exactly the same for your L2. To me, conditions matter as much as processes. As important as it is to keep in mind the similarities when it comes to processes, we need to acknowledge the differences when it comes to the conditions, the context. After all, languages don't exist in a vacuum and language teaching doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's much more to unpack, so be sure to subscribe. Thank you for tuning in and until next time.